Hey there folks, it's me, the Tactical Brit, and I am still on holiday. It's been really nice. Uh, I hope you guys are enjoying your summer, and of course, there'll be plenty of videos out, but I'll be back to full-blown live streaming and some other bits soon. Now, today I wanted to talk about something that I'm seeing a lot of in the community, and I'm seeing this on Twitter, I'm seeing it in the comment section, I'm seeing it basically everywhere, and that is premium versus this current live service. And today, I really want to dig into this topic, get my teeth into it, and of course discuss with you guys in the comment section below what premium and the live service are like in Battlefield and what hiccups we seem to have come across. Now you guys know that I really appreciate your input on this and I've always been pretty hands on in the comment section so I really want to hear what you have to say about this so we can get chatting and of course if you're on Twitter as well make sure to hit me up there. Now, for those of you who are a little less informed, and I'm just going to do this in general just because not everybody has the same insight, uh, Premium was the service of Battlefield that you saw in Battlefield 1 and previous iterations like 4 and 3, where you would pay a fee of around about £40, £50, around about $60, give or take in the US, and you would receive a certain guarantee of certain DLC content that would be released at certain points. You were guaranteed like 4 DLCs a year or maybe 5 DLCs in the space of a year and a half, and um, the content was pre-scheduled you knew when it was coming it had a date it had a set date from the second you bought the game and the second premium was announced and everybody sort of had a fixed idea of when the content would be arriving and that was about it for example you'd probably expect one dlc within the first two months the next one would be two to three months later so on and so forth until the life cycle of dlc was complete Premium by no means was this godsend, um, it had great features and it featured some really good content in the past but at the same time it kept a lot of really good and important information and content behind a paywall that stopped players who were less financially able from accessing certain servers it was actually very detrimental to the life cycle of games. For example, most DLCs because they were behind a paywall meant that different servers were running different maps that some people didn't have access to and ultimately killed the longevity of some of these titles. Titles. Now, there is lots of people saying that wasn't the case, but it was in fact true, and only recently due to things like Origin Access and things like mass sales on these DLCs where they cost a few pounds at best, have these DLCs been accessible to a wider audience, meaning that there has been less segregation in the long run, and you can still see games with like Battlefield 4 and 3 with thousands of players on a regular basis. In contrast, the live service is very new. It's Battlefield 5, and for those of you who don't know, the live service has effectively been a constant state of providing content and updates on a regular basis that has been completely free, be it the Firestorm mode that was at Battlefield 5, or DLC maps like, I don't know, Panzerstorm, everything in between. And there has been a pre-planned as of now, although there wasn't previously, multiple chapters ahead including the Pacific which will feature three maps or so, multiple weapons and everything in between. So it's a bit more of a slower drip feed of content and the Pacific is probably arguably the first large drop of content that you'll see considering the game would have been out by around about a year by the time this releases. So it's a very different state of affairs and today I want to discuss why this topic has come up and what people are saying. And of course as usual you'll get my insight. Now Basically, the problem people are seeing right now is due to the fact that Battlefield 5 as a game has been fundamentally disappointing. It's safe to say that although I really enjoy Battlefield 5, and I'm sure lots of people will agree with me, the current state of affairs, especially in terms of quality and in bugs, is simply unacceptable. Battlefield 5 has released with far too many bugs and has far too many being added in various different patches. Christ, I mean, there was a hotfix the other day that literally shut down Xbox players from playing on Conquest, and that kind of thing is just simply unacceptable for a game that is a couple of months, maybe eight, seven months old now. And I think lots of people are really getting upset with this live service where they feel like there hasn't been a lot of content prior to what we're seeing over the next coming months. And basically everything up until EA Play this June was massively disappointing. And now we have a game in a state of affairs where there are just so many bugs and issues that ultimately it just it feels in a very bad place. And a lot of people are pointing towards this live service as the main reason for these failures. And people are saying, well, premium was better. Premium was a better way of doing things. Now, today I'm going to argue a bit against that, but I'm also going to talk about why I feel as though a live service is the way forward. But perhaps there needs to be a change in attitude or a change in cadence from DICE. So fundamentally what you're witnessing here in Battlefield 5, which is why so many people have been claiming that premium is the better form or format of playing Battlefield, 
is the teething problems of a live service, and this isn't just related to DICE or Battlefield, this is a gaming thing in general, and one that critically affects the FPS genre specifically. Now, there are no real other genres bar maybe, I don't know, MMOs, where large content drops are considered a regular thing. FPS games are very much unique in the sense that, you know, map packs and stuff like that are anticipated. But as we've drifted away from this, not just as, you know, Battlefield and FPS and DICE and EA, but just as gaming as a whole has drifted away from this mantra of making people pay for these entire large content drops, which is very divisive for most games and their communities, um, Places like, you know, World of Warcraft, for example, have very much struggled with dropping large content drops for money and then making players play for it without dividing their communities in negative ways. Now, FPS games are their own demon because the amount of development time that needs to go into some of this stuff can be pretty large. It may not seem like it from the outside in, but something as simple as a character model can take a few months. Something as simple as, you know, a couple of weapons can take quite a while to animate, get the sounds for, and get everything right. So when you've got this, you know, entire community and fan base, be it Call of Duty, Battlefield, or anything in between, that are fundamentally used to large content drops on regular intervals and basis, to switch to something like a live service is very difficult. Now, I'm not saying this justifies the bugs and issues that Battlefield's having, but it does explain why it's happening. Battlefield typically had one large update every once in a while. Battlefield 4, you know, we're looking at a game here that, you know, saw a major update every few months, but not really anything in between. So when there was a bug, it existed in the game for a very long time, and Battlefield has very much suffered from that for quite a while. But only recently in Battlefield 1 did the cadence of updates be increased. And now we're combining regular content drops with regular updates, and it really does show that the game in the state it is. Now, Battlefield was relatively buggy, but not critically bad from launch, I'd argue, in comparison to something like Battlefield 4, which was borderline unplayable at launch. But further down the line, these bugs have gotten worse and worse, and it points towards a QA problem in quality assurance, but it also points towards these regular updates are not being done well enough in time. You know, uh, something like a Conquest game crash for Xbox should be detected before a bug is released. And I feel like this regular update of Cadence uh, in terms of how updates are released, alongside the fact that people are expecting regular content with this new update model, has really caused a problem for Battlefield in the sense that, you know, stuff that we wanted in terms of content is also clashing with making the game worse. Now, there are two ways to go about this and one of them is not claiming that Premium is a better system. What Premium did offer, which is why I think a lot of people are saying that Premium is a better way of doing things, is a more delayed cadence in how often updates existed. Now the problem with that is that bugs did exist in the game for extended periods of time, but to combat that situation it also meant that when there was a fix for a bug, it typically was fixed, because there'd been a long amount of time to test it, there'd been a lot of QA surrounding that bug within the space of that update, and you know, a few weeks later, there was plenty of time for the developers to make sure that that was out of the game, whereas in our current state of affairs, I imagine that probably isn't the case over at EA DICE. So, the two ways I'd go about it are this. Either there needs to be a delay in cadence for content in Battlefield, and there needs to be regular updates on a more bi-weekly slash tri-weekly slash monthly basis that really does deal with some of these issues, or there just needs to be a change of attitude at DICE, because, again, this isn't to mock or take the piss out of or anything like that, but constructively speaking, Battlefield 5 should not have launched with the amount of bugs it did, considering how far it was delayed. And if it was that bad when it was released, because there were some serious issues at launch, then the game should have been delayed further. And I know that's a huge financial cost to some of these companies, but ultimately if you're shipping unfinished games, we have a situation now where People have lost faith in the Battlefield franchise to deliver, and people have lost faith in Battlefield 5 because of the state of affairs that the game finds itself in. Now yes, I do believe that the average Joe who logs in online is still going to enjoy the game and may not notice the kind of stuff that I'm talking about here, but the regular players and the people who will buy DLCs and skins and buy content and the people who are very invested in the franchise that will keep coming back, they're looking at the current predicament and asking how has this happened again? And I really do feel as though the sort of idea that I pitched here about the attitude change at DICE and, you know, just in general, the fact that these delays need to become a more serious thing 
is also part and parcel of that going on. And I don't want to question the workflow at the company because, again, you know, I have the utmost respect for the developers who work there. But ultimately, if you have a game where every single time you release, some of the same problems are appearing, then you're not doing something right. Be it how the engine is designed, be it how you're iterating new games upon the same engine, I think most people would expect that when you release a game called Battlefield 4 and the game's a buggy mess, when you release the game that's called Battlefield 5, which chronologically speaking wasn't the game after BF4 but name-wise is, you'd expect there to be a serious leap in how things are handled. You'd expect things like netcode to no longer be an issue, hit registration to no longer be an issue, you'd expect things like RSP to be there from the get-go, and all of these things that are fundamentally things you would anticipate would be improved on from a newer version of a current franchise are just going back. It feels like constantly in the Battlefield franchise we're taking 5 steps forward, 10 steps back. We know the community hates explosive spam. What did we do in Battlefield 1? Reintroduced explosive spam. We're doing the same in Battlefield 5. We've got entire assault classes capable of using PAIT launchers. We've got TNT. We've got grenades that are also anti-tank. And we've got the huge level of that again. And although explosive spam isn't as heavy as it previously was due to some of the delays, at launch there were serious issues with it. And it feels as though we're not learning from these newer games that are coming. So I ultimately feel as though premium is not the answer to Battlefield 5's issues, but the update cadence is definitely seeming to be a problem here for Battlefield 5, and I really do hope we see a solution. Let me know what you think in the comment section below, folks. It's been me, the Tactical Brit. As always, much love, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys when I'm back from my holiday. There will, however, be plenty of videos scheduled during the in-between, so as always, make sure to hit that subscribe and notify button, and of course the like button, and I'll see you again soon in the next video.